I peed on myself. Fortunately, it only happened once, but it was not the most auspicious beginning to my scholastic career in the United States of America. I had just turned seven years old. Three months before, my family had traveled from Egypt to America, where I was going to become eventually an American citizen. I knew two words of English and one phrase, yes, no, and thank you very much. <laughs> Unfortunately, none of those are going to help me use the restroom. <laughs> first day in first grade, nobody else in my class spoke Arabic. I had no idea how anything worked in this country. I'm hearing gibberish coming out of my classmate and my teacher's mouth. I'm looking at the alphabet on the board. I don't recognize any of the letters. There's cartoon characters everywhere. The only one that I know is Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Two hours into the first class session, I had to use the restroom so badly, and I had no idea if we were going to be excused in 30 minutes or three hours. I held it as long as I can. Finally, I said, I can't do this any longer. I got up and walked out the door. The teacher started yelling at me in a language that I had no idea what she was saying. But with the expression her face and her pointing to me to my seat, I knew what she meant. I sat down on my seat. Half an hour after that, there was a puddle on the ground. Yeah, <laughs> it only happened once, but I'll never forget it. It was not easy first coming to this country. I remember when I was four or five years old and my parents were telling me their plans of us moving here. And I had heard that America is the most powerful, wealthiest nation in the world. I actually used to visualize that the ground, the streets outside were gilded in gold. They're just absolute wealth everywhere, truly the land of milk and honey. That's what everybody called it overseas. <laughs> I remember thinking, wow, I bet you the bidets, you know bidets when you use the restroom, you use water instead of toilet paper in many parts of the world. The water sprays up, I thought, well, you probably have hot water there. How awesome would that be? <laughs> then I saw tissue paper, I'm like, seriously? Tissue paper? <laughs> I will tell you the thing that really took me for a spin. American school food. How in the world, I would think, could the wealthiest nation in the world hate their children so much that they would feed them this junk, hamburgers, and pizza? Dad, 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 please don't hate me. That was the past. I now love pizza, wings, and subs. <laughs> Towards the end of the year, there was a test everybody was given, except the teacher would not give it to me. I may not know exactly what's going on, but by that point I realized she's planning on flunking me. I spoke to my father, and I had him go to bat for me with the principal that I want to take the test. Here's the thing. Growing up as a little boy in Egypt, my parents used to tell me, George, you're so smart, you're so smart. I believed them. I was the most naive person that you would have ever met to some degree still this way. <laughs> and if my parents had told me back then, George, you're an idiot, I would have believed that I'm an idiot. <laughs> but when they told me that I'm smart and this teacher's trying to fail me, I'm thinking, did she not get the memo? What is wrong with this woman? <laughs> Seriously, that's a thought going through my seven-year-old head. So my father went to bat for me, I took the test. Everybody who took the test automatically went to second grade. In retrospect, I really should have because I did not know the language. But I was so determined, I got so upset that she actually had the nerve to try to fail me that I would do nothing but study day and night. When my father would come home from work at four o'clock in the morning, I would have my mother wake me up. So all the questions that I had, I would go through with him and have him explain to me. By the time I got to third grade, my English was as good as everybody else. By the time I got to fourth grade, I had the highest score in my class in English. And by the time I got to fifth grade, I had the highest score in my school in English. And that's really kind of how my philosophy in life approaches and how I go through things. If there's something that I'm committed to, I go all in. 
95% of the time, I jumped in the pool and I managed to swim. Uh, the other 5% of the time, well, we all have to drown sometimes. <laughs> it's part of life. When I was in high school, the one thing that I wanted to do more than anything was marketing. Everybody had a passion and a desire. For me, it was just marketing the concept where you can actually talk to someone or write a sales letter in such a way where you can compel someone to take action just by words. It seemed to me like it was magic. Just by saying the right words to the right person the right way, you can have them do what you want. That is incredible! So right out of high school, I got a business do becoming a marketing consultant. I didn't know what I was doing. I just jumped in there. And the first three years, absolute hell. Every mistake that I could make in business, I made. Somehow, I managed to survive the first three years until I knew what I was doing. And I became really successful in marketing. I specialized in the healthcare field, specifically chiropractors, dentists, and medical doctors. When I was 21 years old, I did my very first speech. Before that, I could never look a person in the eye. I was terrified. I was talking to people face to face in that manner in front of a group. I had to read from notes. When I was 21, I decided to hold a one day workshop for some of my clients, and they flew from all over the country. There was only 10, 20 of them there. Five days before the event, I could not sleep. I could not eat. I was an absolute nervous wreck. What did I get myself into? What was I thinking? I remember telling my brother, who was 11 years old, if I ever tell you I'm going to speak in front of an audience again, I want you to beat me senseless. <laughs> well, the day finally came, I was petrified, pure fear, absolute frozen fear. And I walked up in front of the stage, and something magical happened. The minute that I opened my mouth, all fear disappeared. Completely. Not gradually, but utterly. By the end of the day, I had discovered my drug of choice. <laughs> Unfortunately, I only gave one talk after that three or four years later. But then I realized I still love it so much. So every year I would give two or three presentations at different events and conventions as part of my business. And then about a year ago, I was at a meditation center, and the guy next to me talked about Toastmasters. And he told me, you've got to come and visit. Like, eh, OK, I did. And I, oh my god, you mean I get to talk as much as I want? <laughs> Bless me, Lord, thank you. This was the best news I ever heard. So I joined at the beginning of January, and have been absolutely delighted ever since then. Three weeks after I came to the United States of America, I was at my uncle's office. And I saw a stack of paper, 500 pages. I said, oh my god, all the paper airplanes that I can do, all the paper boats. Then I realized, yes, America truly is the wealthiest nation in the world, but not because of money, because of the opportunities available to all the citizens. I'm going to toast